Welcome, episode one, the Puck Daddy Podcast. Because there aren't enough podcasts, I feel. Yeah, you know, there, there's just barely any there, out there. Yeah, we needed another one. Uh, yeah. So thanks for joining us. Uh, you could be our very first fan because uh, I got I got an idea. Um, some people might know who I am, Coach Jeremy. Got a, a few followers on Instagram and I don't know if they know who you are. YouTube. Man. Well, ho- ho- Jeremy, <laughs> Coach Jeremy. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking for this podcast. The first, we're going to go stealth mode, which is a terrible marketing idea from a marketing perspective. Like don't tell anyone. I'm literally not going to tell anyone. So if anyone watching this or listening right yeah. now, you're, you're, you're the goat. You <laughs> found it. Yeah. You, I don't know how. Let me know in the comments because we'll like post some clips. You're looking for some old Yahoo page or something. <laughs> came across the Puck Daddy You struck gold. You struck <laughs> we, gold. <laughs> we got a fresh account on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Brand YouTube. Name. Everything is fresh. Zero followers. This has been a long time in the making. I guess we should introduce ourselves too, right? uh, Of course. So of you're course. Coach Jeremy. <laughs> coach I'm, Jeremy. I'm Hayden. Yep. Jeremy hired me to help edit videos, make mm-hmm. software. I'm basically his right-hand man. Great right hand man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, vid- the videos get done because of Hayden. The YouTube. If you're Does a YouTube some code follower. stuff too. This guy was <laughs> running <laughs> linear regressions to He's kick the into Tim the Hortons frame. Yeah, I, top I, three picks. I overanalyze everything. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then we got Coach Chip. We got Coach Chip. Chris. No one actually knows that, so you guys know my name now. Ooh, it's Chris, but AK Coach Chip, mm-hmm. um, the greatest. Outdoor rink hockey player in the world, self-proclaimed, self-proclaimed. You <laughs> okay. don't, know, you do not okay. want to catch this smoke on the ODR. Okay. Um, o- ODR season's coming up. I don't have my ODR season. We got a rink out back. On, we'll, but we'll we're gonna, to the we're gonna test that. I'm actually thinking there's a uh, a four and four pond hockey tournament. Mm. I'm, I might just go sign a team like outdoor. Yeah, outdoor. Oh. Yeah, it's on the lake. They put like 20 rinks out there. It's I think it's in Gravenhurst. We'll see. There's a few of them around here, actually. So I'm going to put a team in, and we'll, we'll see if you make the cut. Yeah. Well, if you want to win, if you want to win, you know who you're putting on the team. Okay. If you want to win, you know you're putting on the team. I guess we should see what is this podcast. Yeah, it's been a long time in the making. I've been putting the idea in Jeremy's ear for like two years, saying like, "Hey, you keep saying we want to make more easy, producible, long form content. Why don't we do a podcast?" And he's yeah. like, "Yeah, you're right. We probably should." The, the year U- later, no, <laughs> another year. The YouTube videos take a while, so it's like this is nice. We just chat and like get the long form. Like when if we want to rant or talk about a topic, it's not as exciting for like a YouTube video to be like thirty minutes of someone talking. Yeah, like we're just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. They all know what podcasts are. Have, yeah. have you ever done a podcast? Or is this the first, first one, you've one. Ever done? I have been a guest, but I have not created one. Um, so the idea here, good old Canadian content. Yeah. Right. Canadian good. hockey guys. If you like hockey, it's a bo- bonus. Mm-hmm. Not necessary, but... We're going to talk about hockey. Yeah, the Leafs. I'm going to talk yeah. about parenting. If you're watching oh, yeah. on YouTube, we got the, the Leafs wood jerseys up in the back. We'll talk about the Leafs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, w- whatever is uh, is happening, you know? Hell What's yeah. Fresh content. We got a nice range. 37. 23. Mm. And 27. There we go. We got the range. Yeah. We got all faces. <laughs> Young got, hip, hip, TikTok got, generation. Hey, as far as... Uh, your, dances. Yeah. And a little body roll. A little <laughs> body roll. We'll do some body rolling on this podcast, he's, too. He's in the in the know with all the kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Jeremy. He's he's married. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got a girlfriend. Chip single. We got all phases right here, right? <laughs> single ready to mingle. <laughs> And we're bringing that energy, ladies. There we go. So we, before we dive into the first topic, let's do a little, little character development. Right. Just, just throw it out there. Oh. Uh, you know, we can connect with the three people watching this yeah, right now. You the, guys are the best. The two right the now. two listeners. And let us know in the comments wherever you're seeing this. Let, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. And go tell everybody this is the best podcast just in spam. the world. It's the best podcast in the world. Spam Jeremy's inbox and say, hey, I'm a puck daddy. <laughs> I'm a puck daddy. Yeah. What is a puck daddy? A puck daddy. You don't have to be a dad to be a puck daddy, but hockey dads, welcome. Yeah. Like, this is your... We're, I'm a puck daddy. I don't. I have a, exactly. I have a puppy, like or a dog. But a pup, a yeah, pup daddy, a pup daddy. Puck daddy, <laughs> puck daddy is anyone who owns the puck. If you, if you, if you carry that puck Ooh, on the ice, you know, Ooh. the king of the rink. You're the king of the rink. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Rag that thing around. That's yeah. what I like to do. Anyone can be a puck daddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and first topic, let's talk about a little character development. Uh, we'll, we'll throw something out there. A, a deep personal question. Let's get deep. <laughs> Just casual. Throw love it. a deep personal question. Let's throw it out there. I um, love for these. What? We'll, we'll start with with. Chip, yeah, yeah, you go first then, bud. <laughs> what is the most important thing in your life right now? Oof, that is a deep question. Deep and I think I've been reflecting. Burrito review. Burrito review. Do I go regular or mucho? It's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm a. Uh, I'm a. Uh, I don't know. I, that's actually a deep question. Um, I'd say right now, I think the most important thing for me. Was that the question? It is. Yeah. Um, probably just like creativity and learning about myself. Love it. And then this week was a lot 
for me was empathy, like having empathy for others. Like, I don't know what's going on even in your two worlds. Like you're living in your own little mind. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's been like, holy, I've been in my mind, mm -hmm. but I haven't been showing the other people around me, like, so asking them questions of how are you doing? You like, want to put yourself right. out yeah, there. Like, yeah, like genuinely, like, how right. are you doing? And like, because mm -hmm. mental health is like obviously a real thing. Yeah, I saw a TikTok you made. You just walked in the grocery store and you're. Yeah, you dude. Made a just challenge. Like, it's a mojo challenge. You got to say hi to people. Dude, oh, just oh, I like that. Yeah, I like, yeah, I like your like, shirt. Yeah, and you just counted them up. That's dude, a great, great like, challenge. I like that. Well, because no, no one, no one's complimenting like each other. Like, I don't know. I don't get, I don't really get many compliments. So if I can go to a grocery store and be like, hey, I like your shirt, put a smile on someone's face. Great. They might go home and, yeah. And you might forget what you thing there for but that's all right <laughs> there's exactly zero, there's zero no downside egg. to doing that no like, zero there's no law like and the thing is you go you walk away you you made someone smile and they then you feel better you. if they ignore you what's then it's not the end of the world Doesn't and i'm kind of doing it for myself too because yeah. when i call i feel good like i feel good just going right. out and i'm way more present and yeah so i would just say like getting my energy at a right place protecting my energy mm -hmm. and trying to take life a little less seriously and joking around and yep. like um, for sure. So that's very yeah, that's probably what I would say. I'm very, I'm a very philosophical person. We, we need you to eat that, Mike. Are you picking them up? Eat on? that, Mike. Eat mic. I apologize. Oh, I'll yeah, eat the yeah, mic. That, that was a little bit better there, Chip. But there we go. We could, I could, there, I could yeah. hear you, but it, um, yeah, get, get, apologies. Stay close. Stay close. We're just scoot, we're, scoot your chair. This yeah, is I'm a temporary scoot my setup. Chair in. Yes. Um, grow with us. We, we, you can see we need a little bit of cable management, but we, we got some good quality mics. This is going to be top notch real soon. G going in the, in the deep thing and, and where you're at, you know, 23, talking about, you know, growing and learning. And it, I think that's so important. And, um, you're figuring you know, yourself out while mm -hmm. also putting yeah. yourself out there. Yeah. I, I always say, like, whatever stage you're at in your life, you be the best version at that stage. So, like, if you're in high school, be a high school kid. Do high school mm. things. Don't hold yourself away in a room and just do homework and study, study, study. Because you don't, then you miss that high school experience. Sure, it like it, it can. Just twenty three. Uh, no, no, I'm saying like, <laughs> for other people, for other people. Right, no, hell right, yeah. Right, yeah. This isn't. It, it's a story. You know, follow along. Come on, Aiden. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. You know, be a good high school student. Like, do high school stuff, and then you go to college. Do do college stuff. Yeah. Don't try to be like an adult and a professional and like. Yeah. something like of course that's good to strive towards right but you need to Don't do set too much expectations basically. yeah because because yeah. if you're trying so hard to be a professional or something when you're young and then you become one but then you look back you're like i missed out on this and that and i didn't travel like you just got back from mexico for like three weeks right dude like, like do that when you're young you have to and yeah. i just like to touch on the high school things i think mm -hmm. um for me i've learned just a lot over the past years being out of high school like when you're in high school, you want to be like everybody else. Like you're like yeah. trying to fit in. You're trying to wear the same clothes, the same swag. You're seeing what works for you. You're seeing you're and, and, and you're you're just in a weird phase. Mm -hmm. So like if you're right now, you're in high school. Like it's so much different when you when you're done high school. Like a lot of people that I went to high school with, I don't really talk to anymore. And it's like okay. you grow and you you figure out what you actually like to do. And for me, it's just been what do I like to do? And I like creating. So like mm -hmm. doing a podcast like this, this is awesome. Yeah, like this is I love well. I love it. I love just yeah. you know free flowing yep. and like having an idea come to you and taking action on that idea. When, when you're younger, like you try as many different things, you get jobs, like get a new job every three months and see yeah. what works for, for you, sure. right? Like, put, put travel stuff on the wall, a bit. See what sticks. Exactly. Yeah. Cause you're young and you got to learn and grow and, and that's going to set the, the pace for the rest of your life, you know, until you're kind of more locked down. So I think that's really important. And going on with that stage, like I'm, I'm a, a dad now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not trying to do college stuff. I can't. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to clubs. I'm not going to go to spring break. Really? You know? I, I thought that's You're what not we're doing there, not doing body rolls on spring break, <laughs> no, Jared. I was at Home Depot. I, I, was at I, home go, I go home for the weekend, and I don't know what Jared does. <laughs> right? So it's like, when I'm a dad, I'm not trying to do the college stuff. I did the college stuff. I'm good. Moved on. Next phase of my life, I'm trying to be the best dad I can be. Mm. Right? And and I'm trying to be the best, best husband I can be. It's like, really. So what does that entail? So, so would, would you say that's family. the most important that's, thing in that's your life it, right that's now? It, yeah. family. That's the segue right there. Most important thing in my life right now is family. And just making the most of those moments. It's like every laugh, every, like, you know. While the kids are young. When and, they're young, yeah. yeah. It's like you, every time, like, we share that moment of, like, we're laughing together. Like that, I don't know. It, See, now I can learn from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have kids. You're I, right. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I mean, you haven't made too many mistakes, luckily for you. At least yeah, for we'll, we'll find out when they're 25. <laughs> yeah. See if there's a Netflix documentary <laughs> there, about them. going to be a resume. <laughs> yeah. My dad did this and this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just yeah. trying to, you know, uh, as many positive moments, because it's like, it's too easy to just be like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll do that later. Like, yeah. but like, no one's going to remember. Like, 20 years from now, that's all, it's just, it's just, um, Irrelevant, fluff. Yeah. it's fluff, right? Yeah. 
but those little moments where like you had a little t- tickle fight and you sit down and read a book and wrapped up in your arms like stuff like that you know so most important thing is just uh finding quality time with wow. my family yep. both you guys have such <laughs> full of philosophical answers we're getting deep comes yeah. in. We're getting i deep. like turtles <laughs> <laughs> my biggest priority right now is making sure that i have a good dinner tonight <laughs> yeah there you are, getting it done make sure i'm eating make sure i get water. to the gym in the morning yeah. essentials yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for me, I'd say the most important thing right now, like my biggest focus is trying to um, basically apply myself Mm. in all areas of my life. Like I'm trying to be a better boyfriend, be a better person. You're doing great, Hayden. (laughs) I really enjoyed the movies. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Be a better boyfriend. So what what, what, what would you do to be a better boyfriend? Basically just... You got to make time for those that are important for you. Mm-hmm. So similar to what Jeremy's saying, like with family, right? For me, it's with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. my dog, mm-hmm. and my family, right? So making time for that while at the same time still applying myself in like those little coding exercises that I'm Hell doing. Yeah. That are like essentially a waste of time. If you actually, if no, I'm talking no. to Jeremy, like behind the page, it's like, it's pretty much a waste of time. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm applying myself and keeping my yeah. tools in check, right? Hell so when yeah. he needs me to do something, I can execute. So that's one side of it. And then also I've really been trying to study and learn the art of storytelling through editing Mm -hmm. and like pacing of video creation and stuff. And I've been trying to help with Jeremy to kind of get a bit more structure to our YouTube. Figure stuff out. Yeah. 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 Like we've been, we've been kind of winging it for like two years, three years. And I've learned pretty much everything I know from Jeremy, but now I'm starting to actually study more and be like, okay, yep. how do you tell a story? Why do we have this in here at all? Yep. So that's kind of my focus. Give, give us a little, um, like, so a story. Like, so obviously you want um, to engage the the people that are watching. either watching or mm-hmm. listening. What would you say is the biggest, um, most important thing, like, when telling a story? Like, well, from, intro, like, how do you... I'd say, yeah, Jeremy and I put a lot of en- emphasis on the intro, and I would say... Hook them in early. You got, yeah, you got to <laughs> – Jeremy beat me too. You got to hook them in early. And I find the best way to do that to get people just to want to watch through to the end of the video is to have a storyline that is somewhat predictable but that they want to see the outcome. So like when we – recently we brought the iPhone to our shinny shenanigans <laughs> new series we started – and Jeremy taped it up and we got all this cool footage and the concept was I tape my iPhone to my stick. Yeah. Let's see what happens. But I tried to encourage Jeremy and I like did my own voiceover and then got Jeremy to redo it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Basically to say a storyline, something along the lines of I tape my iPhone to my hockey stick because <laughs> Yeah. I've always told my my players that I you gotta look at the puck like what what does the puck see when you're shooting? Look through the eyes of the stick. So today that's what we're doing. We're taping the phone to the stick. Also, do you think we'll even get any good shots? Because yeah. people are gonna stick around, they wanna see, right? Like that's an easy yeah, storyline. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they're gonna stick around and see if you got anything cool. Yeah, they want they want the shots. Yeah. Uh, should we do that with the podcast? Like, we'll, we'll open the podcast and say, with a hook. We'll stay, we'll stay till the end. Hook, until- <laughs> find out <laughs> Hayden's most gotcha. embarrassing hockey story, right? And yeah. he's like, yeah, tease, yeah, tease, yeah, yeah. And you get to the end, and you say, and stay tuned till our next podcast. Where you learn, hear- Harry. <laughs> no, it's always a cliffhanger. You never actually tell it. It's right. just always dangling. Oh, you could you know do I mean? that. We should do that. Just some random no. thing. <laughs> it's the worst. It's we the worst. We won't do that to you. The running joke. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, got everyone's uh, character mo- development. Most Check. important things in your life I, I love it it's deep and you know what i think i think that's gonna be a good uh oh we'll, we'll catch all that rambling that i just did <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the wheels are spinning the wheels are spinning that's all right um this is why we do it because it's just a conversation just a combo yeah. something that you guys brought up and something that i kind of want to push towards um you know it's it's easy to get comfortable Mm-hmm. You got everything set up, things are good, and then like, all right, I'm just gonna chill tonight. I'm just gonna relax and like, flow. right? And you you work hard. Kids get home from school in my case, and it's like, all right, I'm shutting it. I'm shutting her down. I'm gonna hang out with the kids. Obviously, we need that balance. You need that that family relaxing time, time. regroup. Right? Yeah. After dinner, kids are in bed. Then it's like, okay, what do I do now? We can relax, right? But there's stuff that needs to be done. I'm thinking for November. Mm-hmm. No chill, November. No chill, no, no chill, no I November. Where it's like you push yourself for for one month, right? right. What you would normally do, maybe it's like exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Just try it for a month. No chill, yeah. November. There's no chill this month. <laughs> it's like because I have personal projects. I, I go so hard on like the the videos and this and that, mm-hmm. and then I shut her down. I'm like, okay, but I need to cr- clean that garage. <laughs> garage <laughs> is a disaster. It's and always a disaster. It, it is. It is. <laughs> but 
if I could find like an hour each night mm -hmm. instead of just like chilling, like for example, instead of, I was watching Leafs game. Sometimes I just sit down and watch the whole game, three hours, right? Right. In this case, I tossed on the phone. I'm like, I'm gonna carry it around the house. And yes, there you I'm go. doing <laughs> stuff, and the wife is happier. Sometimes I'll do dishes while dishes I'm watching the game. while it's on. At least and the first period. Like, at least right? I've done the dishes, so I can relax and watch exactly. the rest of the game. Exactly. The <laughs> you know, first period is the dishes, and then you should. But like that's what I'm saying. No chill November. I'm just gonna go hard. I have that mindset, so I'm gonna try that out. Right. If you guys want to try it as well. G give it a shot. Whatever. Give it a shot. All, all three of you. It's overcoming the resistance, though, <laughs> to those things. Like, for me, like, yeah, there's tasks that, like, if you just, it, the, the hardest thing is sitting down and, like, starting to write an essay or mm -hmm. sitting down and going to the garage and just getting one thing. Like, once you've started, yes. it's so much easier. Like, it's just that resistance. It almost just happens. It just happens. It's like, yeah. now you're just in the flow state, and now you're just in, you're doing what you're doing. But it's mm -hmm. the, the resistance I know I find to sit down and do something I've been putting off and putting off. But once I start it, like at school for me, it was writing essays. Like I would just, oh, I don't yeah. want to write it. Mm -hmm. And you then the I name, just, yeah. you put the title and the date. Okay. I think I could take a break now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that, that was literally yeah. me in it. But it was like, but once you get a couple sentences, oh, not a couple more, a couple more sentences. Yeah. And, and then before like, you know it, you have an essay. No yeah, one can understand. Yeah, boom, boom. start coming. <laughs> but you don't even need to write essays now. You just do like AI, like make this for me. Isn't that how oh, it goes? Yeah. Like, Here's there. Yeah, they have the phrase. Don't do the quill bot. Paraphrase. Um, you need it. Only if you need it. To be honest, don't listen to me, in, though. It would be hard not to go down that hole. If you needed something done, it's like AI. Like, I'll just get that and I'll look it over and change a few things. Like, it does it for you. It does, it does, so it does good. It does if you're watching it this, you. this is all made up. It doesn't work. Yeah. Advice. It's bad, bad advice. advice. Like, listen to your teachers. Because the thing is, you are cheating. Go create TikToks. <laughs> you're also cheating yourself. Right. That's the yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most of the, the, when I was in high school, it's like, oh, what's the point of this? We're never going to use it in life. The biggest the point, learning thing is just to struggle through it. Right. And right. actually do it. Because the, then the that point is trains you for life. To, yeah. like, push yourself and challenge yourself mm -hmm. and not be comfortable. To be uncomfortable and, and take on the challenge. The only unfortunate thing about, like, high school in that sense is that it's all external things that are forcing you to do it. Mm. And you don't learn what internally motivates you until, like, yeah. some people never yeah. do it. No. They just finish high school and they're like, well, no one's telling me I have to do anything, so I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when I was uh, in high school, I, I was like pushing myself. I'm like, what, what else is there out there? I was going to uh, the the job office and just finding random things. But like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. I was just, like, just, you know, y you need to be self-motivated. Right. right? But, yeah. You know, when that, when that time comes for you, maybe it's not when you're in high school. Maybe it's when you're in college. Maybe it's when you're 30. Maybe it's when you're 40. When you're 40 years old, maybe you'll find a, a surge of motivation. Who knows? Speaking I think, I think it's like self-discovery. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of motivation, mm -hmm. what did you guys think about the Leafs motivation the other night against Arizona? <laughs> Recording this on Wednesday, it was what was that game Monday? I, I, let's so just talk Monday. about the start of the season because <laughs> as a I, whole, I, yeah. I, and this this might continue for whenever you, you six people find this podcast. Hopefully, the Leafs win now. the next game against Dallas. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It's the same thing. It's like they they start, they stutter, they they can't find themselves. They go through a bit of slump. I think last season it was like ten games where they didn't really do much. And then they yeah. started kind of like... Basically, yeah. Campbell started off really hot and mm -hmm. then went yeah. completely cold. Matthews missed the first four, I think. No, well, that, that, that hurt. Yeah. He didn't yeah. score much in the first, uh, you know, 10 I thought, dozen games. I and think then uh, Nylander's yeah. been looking... Oh, yeah, he's been looking he's been, he's been, his shot's been looking fire. Yeah. He's, been, yeah. he's been getting, the, like, some of the best looks, yeah. I think. Willie Styles. He's got a lot of upside. I still I think he hasn't met his full potential, for sure. Yeah, and he's only making, what, 7 mil? Uh, At the beginning, I said I said he's better than Marner. Yeah. Seven milli, six point nine. Style. Style. It's a good. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, it's 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 at least like, it's like we're watching the exact same uh, season. Uh, like the, this season is the same as last season, the same as last one, the same as last one, the same last one. We all like, knew this was gonna. There's happen. no like consistency, and like they're gonna crush. You don't have that feeling, uh, and then they get to the playoffs, they make first like, round, and then they're out. Like the other night, Arizona coming to Toronto to play. I'm like, yeah, Leafs are losing this game. Yep. They beat the. I don't know what it is. Beat the I, best teams. I think in my mind, I'm like, man, Leafs are so good this year. This is, they're unstoppable. But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I just know they're gonna lose this game. I actually put money down on it. You guys, yeah, yeah, oh, big dog, yeah. big dog over there. Yeah. They beat the best teams and lose to the worst teams. That's just what they do. Yeah, yeah. They play down to their opponent. That's the narrative that's been going around right now. Well, yeah. it's tough Fair. when you're paying your your top guys and then you're just putting guys on the lines three and four. Mm -hmm. And it's like you can't really build a team around. You got your three it's guys making three years, the entire yeah. raw. Like it's just crazy. It's, so it's hard to have that yeah, balance. Take them three years to like continually try to replace the third line. Yeah. Like every year it's basically like yeah. a turnover. I mean, no, they can fill in and do a good job, 
And honestly, so far, I'd say I'd been happier with the third and fourth line than I have been with the top two. Yeah. I haven't got to know. Honestly, I haven't got to know the guys yet. Aside from aside from Nylander. Jarn Rock. <laughs> Willie Stahl. Jarn Rock. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I, it, I don't even I know who's on the team. Rock. It's Yarn Croak, but some people have been saying Yarn Crook. I think Jam Rock sounds good. Jam Rock. Jam Rock. Welcome to Jam Rock. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jam Rock. He's a gentleman. Uh, sp- speaking of uh, NHL. Mm-hmm. This is something like a, a lot of kids, you know, they dream of making the NHL. Yeah. Now that I'm older and I've got perspective and I think back of it, I, I'm like the Beaverton blades. They weren't, <laughs> they weren't really a draft. <laughs> they, you know what? Like <laughs> when I was 14 years old and I was practicing, you know, stick handling some uh, crushed up soda cans in my driveway and shooting them against the wall. Did you actually do that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Every kid did that. You didn't have some pucks. <laughs> well, I mean, I had like three, right? Did but, you have to compete though? Did you have to compete? You know what? I, I thought that I was doing everything to make the end, right? And yeah. and then you go out, and I'm like, I'm just looking up in the stands, playing for the, the Beaverton Blades. the guy Blades. with the pen and paper? You know, yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I'm on the B team for the Beaverton Blades. <laughs> Showbound on the B team. You know, population 2,000. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm like, yeah, just waiting for the Leafs uh, scouting guys to come out and be like, yeah, you made the team. I had no idea. I had no idea, yeah. right? But like uh, you know, kids dream of it. You, and then you turn twenty eight and realized. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm thirty. <laughs> realize those inside edges need some work or what? <laughs> um, no, I, th- I think Yager played to like forty something, so there's still like a slight chance. I'm just kidding. I still think I could go. Yeah, I still think I have it. There's no chance. Like that's that's funny actually. When I was younger, it's like twenties. I was like, is there still a chance? Like, like you do know, you, okay? Do you wh- think you could like, handle? An NHL practice, like you think you not a chance? No, I would. I, I, I do. I do. I, I, I do. Practice, yeah. <laughs> I could. I think I could snap drills. it around. I do think I could snap it around. Okay. Okay. I do. I, I think do. You could snap it around. I don't think you'd be able to maintain the pace of the practice. Okay. No cardio. You'd be overwhelmed. Okay. Car- you'd be overwhelmed. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Dude, yes, we, we just played pickup hockey this you, morning. Those and AAA, you those AAA practices were crazy. Okay. If I got my cardio in shape, you make one mistake. The skills there. If if you don't keep up, they're like they will judge you. The only thing, but then you gotta just free flow. Okay. People so, judge. People judge. So, I know a guy. I'm not saying that we could do it, but I would love to. I would like to. Coach yeah. Chip could yeah. just, just Coach Chip could dominate it. An actual. I want to see. I want to see in like a a flow drill where you have a shot. I want to see if I can even come close. That's to what I'm talking about. Like a flow, I'm, like a flow, a three man weave. I'm make it happen for you. Three man weave. Yeah. I, if you I get me out there with you Trevor Zegris and the boys. No, no. I, so Dan Ninkovich, he's yeah. in Oakville, BTNL, right? Mm-hmm. Every oh, every summer, a bunch of the pros come to Oakville. They hang with him, mm-hmm. and they they train. They practice. They run drills for like two weeks. So we should have to train with him for like a month before. To be able to I will get you out to get one of those practices. There. Get me out there with a dart. I'll put a dart in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Confident. We'll man. see. We'll I will see. put a dart in a blender. Because because oh. I I had that same idea like yeah, I mean, how hard could it be like I could I could play a couple shifts like I could play a practice line. I think I could assist. play a practice I'll get an apple out there if you put me on a line with a few decent guys I think I think uh, I don't know one one v one I would I would wreck you both honestly that's mm-hmm. crazy <laughs> that's crazy honestly <laughs> that's you that's haven't that. seen you haven't seen the skill level yet I haven't <laughs> brought it out back. yet He's been holding back I've yeah. been holding back you guys uh, have not seen the skill level uh, yet right. YouTube video coming up yeah let's go I I'm down I just need to get my cardio up I'm gonna start running every day <laughs> he's gonna train to embarrass us <laughs> so I'm telling you so every, every kid's dreaming of making the nhl mm-hmm. now that you're older would like would you still like wish that do you would you want to be an nhl hockey player knowing what it actually takes right because you, you when you're a kid and the that's the thing time when you're a kid you travel. see the dream yeah. you see the fame you see the the is that noise someone squeak in the chair is that me i heard like Okay. okay, we're good. Stop moving. Stop, stop, stop moving. Just hold still. Stop moving. You, you got the dream, right? You, you see all that stuff. Yeah. And But you don't see anything else. Because mm-hmm. right? everything comes at a cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hard work. Everything Jeez. comes at a cost, right? Yeah. Family sacrifices. You're on the road all the time. I don't know if I'd like that. Yeah. I've got kids. 20s? Right? Give me 20s. I think, 20s, I think it depends yes. on what age. I think yeah. it depends on the age, but like yeah. right now. Yeah. I think I, I don't wish that I went that route. Mm. I just wish that I had the opportunity mm. to um, compete with players that were on that route. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I grew up playing, like, local rep Chippy hockey. did. Chippy did. Alex Formington. Yeah. Yeah, you played AAA. Yeah, right? I played so, AAA. Like, like, I, it's weird, though, because as a kid, I didn't have, like, I was super competitive, but I was also in my head, right? Yeah. Like, I didn't want to, like, if there was a team I wasn't comfortable with, I would not try too hard because I was afraid that, 
you're, you're not going to like fit in, you know, right. mm. like as a kid. So like, yeah. I, and also I was a wimp when it came to body contact. I was just a shrimp. Right. So like, but now I'm like looking at him like, I like working out. I like k- yeah, taking yeah, care yeah, of my yeah. body. I'm like, I would love to play body contact now. Yeah. But <laughs> I think, and this is probably true for anyone. As a kid, I thought I was like great at hockey. I really, but I was in a small town playing on like whatever, t- right? Everyone thinks they're good. And then it wasn't until like I started making the how to hockey videos. I'm like, oh, that could have been, you know, like right. I, I was a, a good player. You started looking at the GoPro footage. You're like, oh, oh that's, I, that's how I skate. That's how I skate. Like, <laughs> like I was a good player, but it was like, there was a lot of like, I didn't know about AAA hockey. Really. Yeah. Like I, growing up in a small farm town, parents in a carriage, take you to the rink, drop you off. See, yeah. I, right? I think it's more on me because I knew there were some kids that I played with. Yeah. And they just all of a sudden they left the team. Huh. And I was like, oh, where'd they go? Yeah. Oh, they're playing AAA. Oh, that's cool. Like, <laughs> Maybe I yeah. should try that, but nope. I was just like, I'm happy to keep playing rap. I'm like, I'm tearing it up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I was always one of the best players on my team, but I didn't know that there was like, I wasn't on the best team. I think that's more fun though. Like, I feel fun. like, like I play AAA, but it wasn't like I was never in over my head. Whereas mm-hmm. some kids just want to play AAA, but like if you aren't, if you don't have the skill and you're not going to be getting the ice time, like mm-hmm. it's not fun at that point. Like no. yeah, no. for me, I started, like I was really good at a young age, like at yeah. five, like I was mm-hmm. like really, really good made AAA the first year, was one of the best players on the team, right. and just kept playing, right? So you get you get more comfortable, like, because you, like, in the tryouts, like, it's all it's all just, like, self-belief at that age. Like, if mm. I just thought I was better. Right. Therefore, other kids didn't think they were Confidence. as good. Yeah. So when I'm going in the corner in a tryout, you're not beating me to that puck. You're yeah, not right. gonna, like, I was really good in tryouts. So it's like, I was very competitive. Yeah. Like, I was just like, I'm better than you. You're a double A player. I'm a triple A player. I'm gonna win this. I'm gonna stop <laughs> you. Yep. Do you um, have any buddies that you played with that, like in AAA that played and they just after they reach like 18 17 they just quit cuz they're like well, oh, I'm for not sure. I'm not going I'm not getting drafted so I'm just some kids hang up most, at 16 most 16. yeah most yeah, yeah. it's like draft year it's like that's I'm I'm glad when I'm looking back on it I'm like I'm kind of glad I didn't do that because mm-hmm. I love hockey yeah and it's probably because I never had that thing where I was like well if I'm not going to get drafted why bother yeah you know yeah. Like that guess... mentality is so toxic at the AAA level especially in the GTHL and actually that's something I'm going to pull out right here if anyone has some crazy stories of the GTHL, like AAA hockey, crazy parent stories or whatever, or crazy coach stories. Oh, yeah, send them in. Send them in, because I would love to discuss yeah. that. Because there's some messed up stuff going on. In the I GTHL. think we go minor hockey. This could be like minor a minor hockey, hockey AAA yeah. G teams. Like, yo, the amount of stuff that goes down in the, or in the G. Or if you're a ref. OMHA. <laughs> you're a ref. I'm, I'm talking about, like, parents buying a minor hockey team and then, like, buying the coach. And then, like, a nine-year-old, like, giving them, like, 10 grand cash to come and move and like paying for an Sounds apartment. like the trashers. <laughs> it's yeah. nuts. It's crazy. Dude. But like, this is all like I, I've heard. I've heard like, and, and from right. reputable sources, but I want to hear it from the source. So it's like, I can maybe guest on the show or, or just send like, send some things we can read out and we'll, we'll go down that rabbit hole. Cause yeah. I think it's not talked about enough, like how nuts it is and how competitive it is. The Amer, it's the American, like the G, like not the G team, sorry, the American AAA teams. Like mm-hmm. they're all like, I remember we went to this, one like we played like three it was like an uh, exhibition and we were playing an against exhibition. little it was little caesar detroit little caesar, detroit yeah. little caesars oh, it yeah, was yeah. bell tire <laughs> and all these teams like they they bring people in they had like a kid from russia that they would fly in the game so like we're a team from i played for barry yep. so we can only select from barry mm-hmm. and the same 17 people make it every year because you don't <laughs> get any new people no, right no, not barry, and no. We were like we were a very competitive team, but you go and these guys got guys coming in from Russia, guys from Florida. They're yeah. flying like, right. just like how they just stack these teams up. Mm-hmm. But like the Ontario teams, like Ontario's really well, Barry team can compete with a with a AAA mm-hmm. team important. bringing those there's people. There's a lot in, yeah. of like, I mean, it depends on the year, but there's so much local talent around yeah. here. There yeah, is, it's but, actually crazy. But Barry like, suffers because the t- the players will move out of Barry to go play in the G. Yeah, we right. had that. Yeah. yeah. They they want to be and then they and then they get to the GTHL and then they'll move again to be on a different it's all, it's t- like, like all geographical politics. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's, it's you got you got you got to move. You have yeah. to actually move. Like yeah, you can't that's play where there it gets unless crazy. the parents move and buy a new house. They exactly. Yeah. I literally or, had that happen. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. The story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I got I, I don't want, I don't know if I want to share them just cuz no, no, yeah, fine, but like they they like that happened. Like you you got a kid that's really good who wants to go play for Toronto Marlies, Toronto Nats. And then our team, we're like, well, we don't want to release you because we want our team to be better, like mm-hmm. the best. So next thing you know, we have a 10-year-old kid who wants to go play in Toronto, right. and we're holding him back. He wants to go, you know, accelerate his career. He's going to be uh, he's gonna be playing for a team that had, a, like, an NHL player, had a coach, coach yeah. who had played mm-hmm. in the show. Like, he's getting paid. 
Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. and also can like tell him like he's been in the NHL. You can, you know, you can learn a lot from that. Right. And we like our we had our coaches that were just gonna hold them back and not let him go. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, this kid's obviously he was with one of the best players in our age group. Mm -hmm. Well was one of the best, still is. Um and yeah, he was like being held back and it was ridiculous. And with mul actually multiple of my friends like had that situation where yeah, they had to actually move in order to keep in order to go yeah, play and we're 10 that's and we're 10 happening. guys and that's where these videos so come from that i your make. kid is 10 years old <laughs> and you gotta you're move. like you know what it's we're moving. going to sell our house and take our whole family to a higher populated city and move to this specific location because it's close to this arena so we can play on that team like yeah. i've heard it's rumors happening. of, yeah, of it that's is common yeah it's not crazy anymore no. that used to be crazy but that's not crazy anymore that's and like i get it if they're normal. if they're like if they're that good like at like that age, he was that like he was you that good. Like region. it was did, did like, he go? did he go then? Yeah, okay. yeah, he went. So like, yeah, he was like, I heard of, of a rumor, and this could just be what it is—a rumor. Yeah. But that there was this player that was on the perimeter of one, uh, like zone mm -hmm. or whatever, and they literally just traded houses with another, oh, just another well. player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because they yeah. because they were in different like, but they were like. Maybe like a k kilometer away, but the zoning. For yeah, the it's, it's crazy. Like, it's well, actually yeah. crazy. We're just scratching the surface here because moving is, is pretty common. I have a friend and he moved to, to Toronto. He's like, he's like oh, I want, want my kid to play the best hockey and have more opportunities. And there's a lot more trainers there, a lot more privatized rentals. It's just like you get in them with the other parents, more and, like rental time and spring training. hockey, spring hockey, power skating, nuts, right? yeah, all that stuff, stuff, right? So yeah. spring yeah. hockey. It, it is Holy. a development hot zone at GTHL in right. mm -hmm. Toronto. Uh, but there's a lot of crazier ones where it's like you literally give up. You get a lawyer and you give up ownership of your child, mm -hmm. and then assign. And then what? yeah, and then the coach of the team. I, I just heard get a lawyer, and I was like, mm -hmm. and then you're like, and you give up your. I'm like, what? Yeah, no, you literally you sign away. Like I am no longer this child's parent, just so that they can be in a different. Yeah. So so that the, yeah, like, bro. The, the coach of the team. It's intense. The legal guardian. Jeez. You are now my dad. Like that's what people are doing. It's it's, it's facts. Nuts. Like that's literally facts. Yeah. Like, wow. So if you guys got some more stories like Hockey that, politics. something crazy, let us know. I'm, I'm thinking Toronto, but it's got to be happening in other places. You know, oh, like it's for gotta, sure. There's got to be more. Yeah. So, uh, And then let's move on to how to make the NHL. That's what everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know how to make, make how, you, what's the story? You, you be really good at hockey and become obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think throw some sand in your socks, weigh yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> You bricks got in your backpack. Yeah, bricks in the backpack. Uh, if you're not putting bricks in your kid's backpack when they're five years old, the first day of school, there better be two bricks in it because it, it strengthens the quads. Wasn't there the, right? the weighted skate blades or something? Like weighted skate Oh, yeah, like, but we're talking bricks and bags right now. Bricks, yeah. bricks and that, I mean, that's later on, but like, <laughs> oh, we're talking early bricks and bags, age five. The like JK, yeah. you know, junior kindergarten, bricks in the backpack. They're, they're climbing up the, the I hear they stairs. got kids bench pressing and squatting now at like five years old. You, you got it. You, well, got, if you want to. That's late. If you want I think that's late. late. I'm like two, three. Yeah, honest, my kid's gonna yeah. be my kid's gonna be on the ice set. He's gonna be a power lifter at the day he's born. If, if they can pull <laughs> themselves up on the crib, they can pull themselves up on a bar. You know, <laughs> probably like, better than we can. <laughs> you know, like the the real answer, like, because I've I've thought about this, like, yeah. ever since We've I started how to hockey. Before, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. ever th since I started how to hockey, I'm like, what's the answer? Because uh, you, you know, you're a kid. And you're curious, like, why didn't I make it? How also, could I be better? All the kids message you all the time. Oh, for sure. How, how can I be better? Can you look at my shot. Am yeah. I good enough to make the how NHL? Can I be better? How Watch some coach chip footage. <laughs> I'm going to say something that's a little controversial because it's not what coaches say. Because every coach says, do your best, work hard, and, and you can do anything. Right? I mean, that's just the motivational, like, it, It's great. Yeah. It's great to hear. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. Obviously, you should work your butt off. Like you should, you should be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. But here's my thing: is that don't you think every NHL player wants to put up Gretzky numbers, right? Every player there in the might NHL. be one that's like, you know what, I'm good. Just I'm good on the third. And they all and they all did in minor hockey. I bet you they were putting up A the Gretzky numbers in yeah, minor yeah. hockey, especially right? Especially now, because all like the fourth lines, the third pair of D's. There's no like really huge guys that are just out there to like lay body. Yep, they're all. But were probably elite scorers in whatever league. Yeah, came all, up of them, yeah. all of them, all of them dominated any team they were on. Yeah. Like, but but everyone wants the secret, right? Yeah. They're like, what is the secret? What can I, I do that it. makes it easy? That's you know, what everyone's what's the paying easy for. Way? I yeah. got it. Yeah. Yo, you, you got it. <laughs> it's mojo. <laughs> I thought it was bricks in there. It's back. mojo. <laughs> it's mojo. <laughs> all right. It's mindset. It's, it's mentality. Yeah, there it is. Little Jimmy, little Jim Morrison. <laughs> no, I I I, I just want to tap in here because I do think it's. It is mojo. It is confidence. It's self belief. It's and a mixture of also like just 
given talent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you have, like you need it all. You need to have the mindset. You need to be likable person. Mm -hmm. You need to be coachable. You need to, I think most importantly, it's the self-belief. It's like, you do have to, I don't know. And it's like, you do have to be a little cocky. You do have to have, like, if you that, believe that's in what yourself, that mojo is. Like, yeah. If you believe in yourself, you're more likely to put in the effort to become that, like keep you pushing yourself yeah. to be the better. The number yeah. one most important thing for just becoming good at anything is belief. You need to believe in yeah. yourself. When you believe in yourself, you're going to And that's why coaches inspire kids. To, like, that's why they say that. Yeah. Because they know that all of the elite players believed in themselves. Yes, right. But you also need to have the work ethic and a little bit of talent that came naturally. Desire. <laughs> it's desire to you make need, the show. Yeah. Like, you need, you need to, to have desire. Yourself. With the belief, you you try harder. You yeah. practice more. You, like, have more fun doing it. You're enjoying it. Like, you just, you become obsessed. You need to want it obsessed, more than the yeah. other 20,000 like, people that want it. That, and and mm-hmm. of all the, because the, I, I was obsessed with, like, how do you make the NHL? What's this, what is the secret? Mm-hmm. Like, why didn't I? Why didn't, like, my friends? Why did this guy? Why didn't this guy? Mm-hmm. Right? And, and it comes down to, like, and obviously everyone says hard work, hard work, hard work. Every guy who made the NHL worked hard. Mm-hmm. And some guys are working hard. I guarantee there's guys that are working harder than McDavid or, you know, put in more time or, like, they're, they're doing more, mm-hmm. right? They're, it's not just that. It's not just that. Every person in the NHL wants to put up Gretzky numbers. Mm-hmm. And they're all working hard. And I think I think, I, so I like, I think the want. I think it's, the if, like, wanting to put up Gretzky numbers versus just, like, Austin Matthews. Like, he's not going into the game saying, I need to score today. No. He's just going he's in. Good. He's not thinking. He's a natural. He's just going out there. I'm going to score tonight. Oh, yeah. And it's just, I don't even need to think it's about just, scoring. It's just a reality. It's just, there's no... Yeah. Attach it to outcome. Arizona at home. Yeah, exactly. Unless you can't talk one against. But like, it's like <laughs> having that. Um, when you get attached to an outcome, when you go, in any situation, like, you have to be willing to give up that control. So like, you may not know. You can, you're not guaranteed that you're going to make the show. But if you're doing all the right things, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're putting the work in. Your mindset's right. You're you're self aware. I think there's so much more to making to the NHL than. Um, I've, I've got the answer. Yeah, you got it. You know, got, what's the answer? Well, I'm going to go off of what you're saying yeah. there because it's it's great. When you become focused on a goal, it can actually become demotivational. If it can demotivate you. Yeah. If if it seems too hard, like it, even a team in the NHL, we want to win the Stanley Cup. Of course they do, right? If they lose their first eight games, like well, all we want to do is win the Cup, it, it seems too far out of reach. It seems mm-hmm. like you're not going to do it. Then you start getting demotivated. Mm-hmm. The real goal is just to participate, just to engage in the action of improvement, right? Mm-hmm. So now, instead of like being hyper focused on say like you know winning a gold medal or like or, or something that's like huge real, like dude. A huge getting the MVP on your local whatever team. you know like yeah. leading the the league in scoring or something like if you if you want to be the lead leaguer <laughs> the lead league, leaguer lead leaguer, lead leaguer. <laughs> new, new term yeah. if you want to you know accomplish something that's really difficult right what happens if if you start off a bit slow a little bit of a slump and then you get down on yourself and then like it crushes you right so if if your only goal is just to engage and try and it's achievable. Improve, incremental goals every day you're meeting your goal yeah. and you come away every day feeling good look what we're doing right now this is our first podcast Woo. we're it, it's we you oh, know it's detached applause yeah get, or... it's the first podcast <laughs> episode yeah, if, we <laughs> if, if we don't get one million downloads we're quitting no it's like we're just <laughs> no stuff out there. You're just, yeah. now it's just firing it's firing 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 like Pop. detach detach mm-hmm. from the result and go shoot 190 pucks a day, mm-hmm. and don't worry about making the show. No. Go shoot 200, 400, 500. <laughs> it doesn't like that's what that those are the people that are like the people that are not even thinking about making the NHL, but are thinking about how can I improve my shot today? What can I do? Like it's it's focusing on process and instead of focusing on outcome. Yep. Um, and that, I think that's the biggest thing for me is Focus like detaching from the outcome yeah. wherever. Like if I go to the bar, detach from the outcome. Mm. Like I'm mm-hmm. going to the bar. I can't be going in there uh, wanting, desiring. No, just go there, be be me, be myself, mm-hmm. be there, and mm-hmm. detach from the, result, the outcome and just be good energy. So I think it's love detaching it. from the outcome. I love huge. it. Detach from Getting the outcome. Getting fired up about that. That's detach it. from yep. the outcome now. Mm-hmm. And, and and for my answer to make the NHL. Mm-hmm. All, one one liner. I'm going to challenge you. It can't be a, okay. okay, six words. How do you make the NHL? <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a couple sentences here. Because I have okay, I'll analogy, give you eight a words. Meta, I have a metaphor. A metaphor and analogy. Do I hear ten words. Come Can on, you do on. it in ten words? Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's a recipe. There's no one answer. Yeah. There is not one answer. There but is. That's what the kids want. 50, yeah. Every everyone wants the the answer. What is the answer? What's the secret? Mm-hmm. There's 15 secrets, right? And there's 50, 15 answers. You you need to be just and subscribe like, to hear them on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <Where's> that? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, what is the secret to making the NHL? The, yeah. the secret. Okay, so number one, you have to be athletically gifted. Like there are some I I fully Check. I fully believe 
people have a plateau. There's a bit, right? You guys got it? That's number one. You got number Check. one. All right. We got that. Yeah. There is a bit of a plateau. Even if you are athletically gifted, you might not be as athletically gifted as McDavid, Gretzky, Lemieux, like these guys who dominate. There's ceilings like, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's ceilings, ceilings yeah, for everyone. Yes. You, you are born on a bit of a, a sliding scale. Maybe you're there, and you can move yourself there, Up or here. if you don't do anything there, Jeremy's right? doing a lot of things with your with the hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, we're sorry, going sorry. this way, that <laughs> way. Imagine, way. if you're just listening okay. on, on the, the radio or whatever. You know? The radio? <laughs> yeah, you're listening on the radio. <laughs> it's a sliding scale. You're, you're kind of born within a range and you can with hard work and and good practice and good coaches and all that Elevate, stuff yeah. you're gonna move higher up but eventually you hit a limit and no matter like it's hard to push past wherever that limit is like you know what i mean some guys just find it they, they've got There's a skill ceiling so i would say so, so athleticism it's that one that one yeah like height size all that stuff mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. is that what we were talking about athleticism no, or what? i'd say it's more it's for a me or, i would think it's more related to um, skill ability, skill. yeah. Because so is that number two? So so, so number no, one. Number what was number one? Is, I'm I'm just saying there's a, there's a plateau. So you, you, everyone if, has a ceiling. If you're born like okay. if, if McDavid was was born, but he didn't have all the other ingredients, he would still have been a great hockey player. But so it's number one is is be an athlete. Okay, right? number and, one, and that's athlete. like just genetics. That was yeah, a bit more than ten words. Jared. Sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. athlete. <laughs> you keep, you keep key to the NHL. Key to the NHL. One. Athlete, be be yeah. athletically gifted. You athletically have to. Be. You gifted, have to. Be. And, and people hate to hear it, but I, I think it is like you're born with it in, a, in a way. It's true. Like, yeah. If I'm if better. I'm six foot two, I'm in the show. That's I, I just there's, I, there's, I, <laughs> I, I I just still say that. There's this. There's some people, and you can look around your high school or your, your, your the people that you work with, not an athlete. Are you talking about me? What? Well, <laughs> that, that, that's coordination. I think coordination. Well, that's what I'm saying. I say some people don't have it. Some people, yeah, and you're looking at someone who has it. That's right why now. I kept you're looking saying, at someone who has I kept it. Right coming now. back to the person's skill ceiling, because it skill ceiling in, can in, like implicate their is that overall, coordination like their, skill? Si their size, their athleticism, their coordination. It's a whatever the skill is for for okay. the need that they need to do with. If it's hockey, the skill is coordination. There's um, a lot like speed. It's, power. I think it's the hardest sport in the world. It's, yeah, one hundred percent. And we'll talk about we'll that. We'll say that. Yeah, but, <laughs> for, for many reasons. But we're going down this. So it's like hockey is not just like skill, right? It's we're getting the thumbs out. We got. We're still on point one. <laughs> Athleticism. <laughs> we're, we're forty. <laughs> it's like so many things. It's like the yeah, ability to read and react and to predict and to manipulate and all these things that come into Ooh, being so like skill ceiling. Good. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> just even just your brain like yeah. other things like oh cognitive cognitive abilities skills. of processing things and right. it's it's a like lot. mcdavid is next level so that. we'll just go that all goes down into um your genetics right then parents Two right parents Ooh, okay your that family was... is important if if your family doesn't want to drive you to the rink or doesn't want you right. sign, like if they're not into it or if you're athletically gifted and could be the, the best hockey player in the world could not have been mcdavid and they never picked up a hockey stick right Right? Mm. Their parents, parents are like, you're yeah. playing football, but it's been great. Yeah. That's, that's true, too. Yeah. That's Maybe true. they put that kid on the chess team, right? and <laughs> yeah. he hated it because he was meant to be an athlete, but he never got given that opportunity. And that's why you should give your kids all kinds of opportunities to see, see what sticks. Like, I think hockey is one of the, like, a what's difficult that? one for that because parent, like, you need to start you need ice. You need to go, like, you need to be on the ice. You need yep. to be skating. Whereas, like, soccer, you could go out and, when it, like, on your free time, just go kick I'd a soccer ball gap, and you see the ball. The gap to pick up hockey Crazy. Is much bigger than any other sports. So if you don't put your kid in when when they're young, then they're gonna have a lot of catching up to do yeah. to the other kids of their age, yeah. and then all of a sudden it, you can't even catch up by the time you're 18. It, essentially, you have to be athletically gifted, like born with some that that you know natural ability, mm -hmm. and One. be obsessed. Oh, we'll just put it those two as like the most important. Right. You're athletically gifted, and you become obsessed with it. Right. Like McDavid, two and a half years old, he was in rollerblades all the time. I did an interview with his mom. Okay. Podcast like talked for like half an hour. Ooh, let's right. well, let's talk about there that. <laughs> He's in rollerblades all the time. Like mm -hmm. I put Mason in rollerblades. He's two and a half. Went around a little, didn't like him. Mm -hmm. Never wanted to do it again. Yeah. Right? But you get these kids that are just like rollerblades are the difference. That's when my my buddy Alex. <laughs> he was on the rollerblades. Make the NHL. It's the roller inside <laughs> edges. I'm telling you, it's those the tomahawk edges, mohawk edge. But, tomahawk. But roller blade, but rollerblades. You can't, you can't force your kids no. to wear right. Like yeah. I'm like, here you go, bud. I mean, He's you, like, you nah. could. It probably wouldn't go over very well. <laughs> I, think my, I, I think my dad did. <laughs> the, the, the player has <laughs> slept in those puppies. <laughs> I was on a t age two. So so uh, th then another story. Like when McDavid was a kid, she's like, oh, like he used to shoot pucks all the time, and then one day he. He's like, you know, sitting at the the, lunch, the dinner table. Mom, I don't really feel like shooting pucks today. Okay, no problem. You don't have to. Right? Five minutes later. 
I'm going to go shoot pox. I'll feel bad if I don't. Because it's just that <laughs> it, much like, ingrained in his It was bothering skull. him. It was yeah. bothering him. Right? He loved it. Nobody you gotta was, love it. Was, it was eating in the back of his mind. It's like that itch that you have to scratch. Nobody forced yeah. him. Same thing with Gretzky. I read his book, and, and he's like, I woke up oh, in the morning. Yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, yeah, I woke up in the morning, went out on the pond. I got home from school. I'd go right out on the pond, right? Or a backdoor rink, right? Then all his friends would come and play with him. And then he'd get called in for dinner. And after dinner was his time. Just him on the rink by himself. But like, you also, didn't you tell me about how he was studying footage and like, like oh, imagining yeah. plays yeah. and he, stuff? He like, like if he notebook. wasn't on the pond, he had a notebook. And he, stuff. So, yeah. like, some that's next that. level. Some yeah. kids watch TV with their kids. It's like Hockey Night in Canada, or whatever, right? He gets a, a sketch pad out. And he's got a p- piece of paper and he's got the pencil. And he's following the puck around. And his dad's, you know, Walter. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I just want to see where the puck is going. And he's drawing all these patterns and he's studying it. And he's like, where should I go to get the puck more often? Like, where is well, the puck the most? He got the puck. So much more than anyone else because he, ahead. yeah, like right. the mental game you're talking about. You don't about. teach yeah. that, yeah. right? No. The kid has to want it. So natural ability, obsessed, actually obsessed, yeah. right? right. If, if, if your parents are forcing you to go to the rink, I mean, you're going to be a ho- good, you're, you're probably going to be a good hockey player still. Right. Like if you're playing a lot and getting lots of ice yeah. time, not the NHL. The NHL are, is hard. It's not easy. I, those are two right. pretty solid first points. You and said do, there was do, 15 do you want, points. Do you want, do you want to know the, <laughs> the actual <laughs> one? Do you want the one? you want to know the actual one that I'm thinking? Yeah, bricks in the backpack. Compete. This See? word, oh, this word, com- no, yeah. this is everything. Mm-hmm. If you do not have the compete, you're you just you don't have it. I think I think compete right. is okay. the, number three. Like, it, yeah, number, number three. It's got to be. Are we drafting? I, I think uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Compete's yeah. number one. I, I'm going. I'm arguing compete's number one. If you are not oh, competitive, okay. if you, um, like in a tryout, like if you're just if you don't have that compete in the one on one drill, it's just I just think that's the most oh, important. Oh, so you're saying I'm, I'm saying, you're I'm saying, saying number one, David and I'm not budging. The number one talented player gifted, but if he didn't have the compete, if he doesn't have the compete, if he's not competitive, it doesn't trials. matter. You think he? I just think it doesn't matter. Ignored. I just think it does. Like in order to I get think to that, that kind of comes into a bit of like the um, hockey politics too, because like if you want to make a spot on a team, you need to to like beat out another kid to do that. And it doesn't matter how talented you are if you, you're not if you're too afraid to go to believe and, that you're better than him. Like if you believe so, like I think it's yeah, like yeah. it's like as a kid, yeah. you know, like as yeah. a kid, it's so much about confidence. I think you're right. It is, yeah. yeah. The, the thing is though, if you're young and you, you're obsessed with hockey and you play all the time, you're just gonna get good because it's gonna be all you do. Yeah, McDavid yeah. didn't need to compete. He was already flying by everyone. <laughs> oh, what? Because he was obsessed at like from a young age. And, and another thing which people won't want to hear because it, it is healthy le- more healthy overall mm-hmm. to play multiple sports. Right. right? And I asked, I was like, yeah, did he play multiple sports? Not really. You know, he, pl- he played a little lacrosse in high school, but he didn't really like that much. It's just all hockey all the time. Right. So mm. No parent wants to hear that. That's, that's I think, not what like mm. most so people are saying. I think there's a difference because most of the elite players could have been really good at another sport because they're an athlete, mm-hmm. but yeah. they, they chose to be really good at hockey and that was what they're obsessed with but they could have played it. But people are saying, you should play multiple sports. Well, that's just because all the good players can, but decided not to. Yeah. The, the problem, <laughs> There's a difference. The there. problem with not playing multiple sports and just doing like one sport or one anything all the time, mm-hmm. number one, you could get burnt out. So that's an issue. Um, GoPro turned off. Oh, no. Swap the battery. You keep talking. I'll fix it up. Break. All right. Here we go. We don't need to pause it. You can just keep talking. All right. All right. We got the audio. We'll just put like... We're live again. <laughs> well, I think I accidentally hit the pause button to fix the GoPro. I think you took the headphones down and put them there. And then oh, no, the my bad. Okay, voice. whatever. We'll, we'll start over. Yeah. Uh, so, so, big issue with uh, playing multiple sports. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, not playing multiple sports. Just like right. focusing on one. Hyper-focused. Yeah. Hyper-focused, yeah, on a single sport early. Uh, the first one is that you could just get burnt out and like you play because you love it. But if it's all you do and all you see, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're hyper-focused on a goal. I want to make the NHL. You don't make it. Okay, I'm done. Right. I've, I've seen him. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. I've, I've been in a rink like every day of my life for the mm. past like 10 years. Maybe you want a break, right? right. Which, whatever. If you need a break, take a break. Mm-hmm. But like, I'd say the best thing is just to you play hockey for your whole life, right? You want to have fun. Yeah. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy yourself. The, the, the thing is, the guys that are obsessed with hockey still had fun. They still have fun. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you're not having fun at any point, eh, you're probably not making the NHL. Yeah. You I mean, know? Like, like if, if you get sick of it. Yep. Then why are you gonna put an extra effort? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you get the guys that like put in the effort early and they're really, really good, and, and then, then they kind of get free ride they get, it. They get drafted anyways, and they're like, whatever, yeah. I'm just gonna take these paychecks and right. keep showing up, right? <laughs> yeah. like, there's got to be a few like, guys. Like, uh, I, I feel like uh, Johnny Goudreau is one of those types of guys. So. I just Johnny get that Aggie. vibe. You know? I get it from Line A. 
line a a little bit but if, if, if you throw to me it's like, like yeah. i don't know for me him going to columbus was just the cherry on top it was oh, like castle. yeah castle or castle sure. for sure just rode it to the <laughs> castle NHL, came yeah. to toronto and he's like this is gonna be great we're gonna win a cup and then yeah. he saw the toronto media he's like i'm going to arizona i'm <laughs> out of here yeah like, take me to a desert state where people don't even know what hockey is yeah, yeah like no phil's just arizona, like give me that paycheck and let me yeah. Put a couple goals in and eat yeah. some glazies and I, get out of I here. I mean, Matthews came out of uh, Arizona, so they got a decent hockey team scene there. The Yotes. Um, but but I, I was in Florida, and we were doing something with uh, Barkov, mm-hmm. right? On the beach, this big hockey thing. Like A, a small pattering of people showed up, you know, like yeah. 50 people, right? It's Barkov, Alexander Barkov. He has his jersey on. In the on the <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> but, but he's like, oh, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And it was like a, a public bathroom. You had to walk like uh, a block to go use it. Yeah. yeah. And he's just walking. And I was like, oh, I got to go too. I'll come with you. Right. So we're just walking. He's walking down the sidewalk. Yeah. On a busy road. In Florida. It's Alexander Barkov. He has a Florida Panthers Barkov jersey <laughs> on. Like he's a walking well, billboard for himself. People probably thought that like it wasn't him because he's wearing the jersey. <laughs> no one. No one looked. Honk, no one stopped. has a clue. No one. He, Imagine someone walked up to you. Hi, Coach Jeremy. Can I? <laughs> That's happened with not with like a, a big star, but like yeah. Yeah, it has happened before with uh-huh. NHL players where the kids are like, whoa, you're the YouTuber. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> hilarious. Anyways, uh, the next issue for, for uh, hyper focus on a sport is just overuse injuries. Mm. Right? You, you get doctors and they're seeing kids that are like 13 years old and they have to do hip surgery on them. Right. Because these goalies have just been like oh, skated and skated and like just pushed so hard and they never get a break. Their muscles never do anything else. So right. it's just so much strain or like uh, mm. elbows issues. Even in baseball, I heard about that as well. Oh, just baseball's them, like, a Tommy John. Tommy John's, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you get these kids that have these injuries at 13 and, and they're not supposed to be seeing those types of issues until like 60 or 70 years old right right so yeah that's, that's a big one you want overall overall health mm-hmm. is important all right so if you were to give everyone listening one final motivational thing if you want to make the nhl to just wrap this segment up what would it be if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen like that's very motivational it's <laughs> I said I motivational. Know. There's, <laughs> I'm trying to just be real. Okay, I right? like it. Like, I like it. Yeah. Do your best. Challenge yourself. If you feel like you're better fun. than everyone else, keep pushing. Just keep on trying to be the best you can, because yeah. then it doesn't really matter if you make it or not, as long as you you come away feeling you always did your best. Yeah. Oh, I have a do good pointer. That's it. If you're one of the people, which is most people, that thinks they're the best on their team, why don't you be better than yourself? Yeah. <laughs> just yourself. keep keep. So that's making it. yourself better. That's what the elite players did. Yeah. So it's okay. So motivational. Do your best and always challenge yourself. Mm-hmm. As long as you continue to challenge yourself, that's where the improvement comes. It comes from the challenge. Yeah. If something is easy for you, you need to level up. You all so technically to make the NHL, mm-hmm. you need to always be playing on the best possible team with the best comp best with the best possible competition. Yeah. Right. You can't. Yeah. It, it it's very hard if you're playing single A. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to go to the NHL. Like, you have to go yeah. up to AAA, and then you have to go up to ju- Major Junior, and yeah. then you have to be, dr- you know, you always want to go against the best competition, but always challenge yourself and have fun. That's one thing that we always uh, preach on the pond. Yeah. Like, for even for beginner players, it's we always say, keep challenging yourself and have fun. Yeah. It's the same for the elite players. It's just a lot harder to keep challenging yourself once you get to a really yeah. elite point. I'll, I'll say find your best. Find what your best is. Uh, I'd say have some patience. Mm-hmm. Have patience. I think a big thing that separates the best players in the world, mm-hmm. like Crosby, patience with the puck. Like McDavid, mm-hmm. be patient. Like yeah. be patient in everything. Like just let it, mm-hmm. let it come to you. Don't force things. Right. We're talking the, the Buddhist mind right now. Yeah. So yeah. Let it come to you. Yeah. Don't chase a tract. It, it's not easy. Just do the best that you can. Right? Yeah. Keep on giving it your best. And yeah. Maybe we'll talk about parents, you know, with their, their kids and, you know, another episode. <laughs> no, another episode. We got to wrap do, this If you're up. a parent, how do you motivate your kid? <laughs> we'll what? get that in another episode. There we go. Or, yeah, like, you know, don't, I, I, I was talking, I'll drop this one here. I was talking to Shane Corson and he was talking about, um, you know, his kid playing hockey and he's trying to motivate him and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And, uh, you know, he, he one of the car talks. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the post-game car talk. Oh, right? I know all too Chip well. Knows all about all that. too well. Maybe went a little too hard on him, right. right? And then afterwards, he's like, why did I do that? Right. Why? You just regret it? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Right? It's like... Because, because you want the best for your kid, yeah. Yeah. You but get, at the end of the day, you should 
it's hard to hold back, right? Probably. Well, most I important thing is just yeah. to love them. Love your kids. Yeah. That's easy. There. Right? I like that. Yeah. All right. So we're at 54 minutes oh, on the podcast. I can say let's do a quick half hour, but. Wait, I mean, it was. We got a flowing. Quick, a quick hour. Hey, yeah, we we're flow. just flowing. But I, I wanted to leave the podcast on something that people can look forward to the next episode. Mm-hmm. Dad jokes. <laughs> dad jokes. We forgot to do the dad joke. No, one thing that, uh, yeah, we were going to do dad jokes to start off the episodes, but maybe we'll do that next time. <laughs> um, one thing that Jeremy and I have always been doing is the Tim Hortons hockey picks. <laughs> oh. And um, I just thought we should share our picks for today. Okay. And then and then we'll, we'll each make our picks for the days um, leading up to when we do the next podcast. Yep. And we'll see who has the best record the next best week. Well, oh, well, I don't, I wasn't. Loving my picks today. Oh well, then uh, hopefully uh, maybe, maybe you you don't love them. You get all three, and Jeremy and I can't get. Them. <laughs> that, that's the other thing about like gambling. I mean, this is free. It's fantasy. It's free. It, it's yeah. free fantasy. There's nothing free. Else yeah, I'm not, no wager. I'm, I'm sure you guys have all seen Jeremy talk about this before, and me as well. But if you're in Canada and you go to Tim Hortons, if you if you, you if you've used the mobile app, yep, it normally pops up with a thing for like a hockey challenge. Yep. And you can pick three players, even if you don't know anything about Very hockey. Simple. You pick three players. If any of them score, you can start a streak. And if you get a streak of seven, then you get, like, free coffee or something. And, and yeah. Hayden is challenging us, but I am on a five-day hot streak. I haven't missed. Yeah, but it, it starts now, though. It starts, starts now. Yeah, because I, I forgot Just to saying. do it for, like, three days. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you have to actually make your picks. Yeah. That's all right, so I'll, I'll yeah. lead it off. Oh, I, wait, we should say it's three tiers. So, like, the top tier is all the best players. The second tier is, right. like... They might score, and then the third tier, they only give you like defensemen and fourth liners to pick from. Yeah, it's like so it goes in order of so most like, likely to score. Why did you yeah. pick, uh, you know, Bo Byron? Yeah, why, why didn't you pick <laughs> David Drysaddle Matthews, man? Yeah, Come on. yeah. Every day, yeah, every, yeah. Day, yeah. every yeah. day. Yeah. So I got in the. There's only uh, three games tonight. So top tier, go top tier. Top first. tier. Yep. I got Nikolai Ellers. I took Barkov. Okay. I got Matthew Kachuk. Mm. Oh, solid. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm I feeling should, better about mine I as I look dis- at them. I should disclose that all of my picks are based on um, p- the pure numbers. He, he's cheating. I'm he's, not cheating. I'm just he's using, created, uh, I'm using statistics. I'm using linear statistics. Regression. To, okay, you guys are just X variables, Y when, variables. <laughs> he forked the uh, mainframe and then hacked into I found the running algorithm C-sharp stuff database. I'm not even going to bother to try and explain this to you. Go ahead. Go, we'll give you five seconds. Okay, basically, I forked a repository on GitHub, made my own copy of it, got the shots on goal, like goals per game, and then checked for each player their goals per game versus the upcoming opponent for the past ten games. Did we not just and say the same thing? them together. Yeah. That's, what you, that's what we yeah, just said, right? We just and said. I took exactly. and I take the player that has the highest expected goals per game based on my X and Y variables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, based my X on the and Y variables. Yeah, the, based on the X and Y. So Nikolai Ellers, you got Barkov, you got Tuchuk. I got good Chuck. All right, second tier, I got Braden Chen. My numbers say. Right. I I took uh, Valerie Nachushkin. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hot hand, like he scores oh, yeah, all the he's, time. He's solid. That's. Good I'm thing. feeling super good about this one off the board. I thought you weren't feeling good. I'm, I'm feeling so much better now that I look <laughs> at this. I'm looking. This is. I think I got the best three here. Oh, okay, okay. I got uh, Kevy Hayes talking one tonight. Oh, Bingo for Philly. Okay. For Philly. I don't think it's happening. Kevy Hayes is bingoing the, one tonight. The Panthers? I yeah, guarantee. I guess, I mean, actually, I, mean, I guarantee we a Bingo the Leafs tonight. Game with Chip the other day, and uh, and he he called Coffee. bunting to get the first goal, and yeah, he was right. I guarantee and Caulfield to get forty. So I'm not betting against him. Tier three. I got Colton Pareko. Not bad. I got Bo Byron. Bo Byram. Yeah. I feel so good about this. Uh, Mr. Krug. Mr. Tory Krug, oh, offensive solid. defenseman. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my solid. numbers were skewed a bit because I got two um, St. Louis Blues, but it's because they're playing the Kraken. So uh, they all yeah. score a lot yeah, against yeah. the Kraken. So that's a part of your algorithm. Yeah, like I'm. this is zero. Things. Like I honestly probably would have picked a couple the same as you guys, but I am going pure objective or what do you call it? I know. Non-objective. Numbers. Numbers Your only. Numbers. I, I pick from the heart. Statistics. <laughs> I'm picking from the soul today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're almost Puck an hour guys. in. This is our first Puck Daddy pod. If you're one of the three people that watched it, thanks a lot. We're doing a fist bump a right now. fist bump. We've been waiting for this for a while. Yep. <laughs> Power uh, bump. Let, let us know in the comments. Uh, topic suggestions. What do you want to hear about the pod? Yeah, you know, we can do a little Q&A. Any stories you want to yeah, share? Yeah, we, we, we should do like, you know, they, they, we, we can read a few questions. Check, on, check in on social for... Uh, we, I think we got Puck Daddy podcast on what is yeah. it on Instagram or Instagram, just Puck Daddy? Twi- no, Instagram. And we'll TikTok. share it in the description. Instagram and TikTok is Puck Daddy podcast. Yeah. On Twitter, they wouldn't let me put the podcast. So it's pod. Long. So it's Puck Daddy pod. Right. Okay. Puck Daddy pod on Twitter. All right. Have See you in the next one. one. Peace. Have a phenomenal rest of your day.